Check this out. A tech worker who was replaced and forced to train an H-1B visa recipient is now running for Congress. And, well, look who joins us now. It's Craig D'Angelo, Republican congressional candidate for the great state of Connecticut. Craig, thanks for coming in. Hi, Charles. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about uh, your background, how, how this all went down. And, and you knew at the time you were training this person that they were going to take your job. Well, in the very beginning, we did not know that we would be training our replacements. We had been called down to what they would call a town hall meeting. And this was in October of 2013. The CIO came down from Boston, said that she would hold a town hall meeting to discuss the future of IT at our particular company, which at that time was known as Northeast Utilities. We all got into the room, 220 of us. She proceeded to tell us that, well, folks, what we're going to do is we are going to outsource IT infrastructure and IT development. And we have chosen two companies, Infosys and Tata. And the reason that we're doing this is because global workers can adjust to change a lot faster than the American worker. Right. Now, when you take a look at this, isn't the American worker also a global worker? Don't we have some input into what, said, what we say or what gets said in regards to a global economy? After all, we are a very so, large market. So two weeks ago, I did a lot of research in this area. I discovered Infosys was the biggest user of H-1B visas. Also, I took all the Indian companies that were in the top 20, and I took all the American companies. The Indian companies, on average, paid 80000 or less. Or less. The American companies paid like 120000 mm -hmm. So I, this, to me, seems like a bold-faced uh, abuse of a, of a system to bring in low-cost workers. And in your case, force you to actually train them. Talk about in, adding insult to injury. Yes. Now, the company that I was working for at that particular time, Northeast Utilities, which is now known as Eversource Energy, when they brought in these foreign workers on the H-1B visas, we were told that we would have to train our replacements. Now, they basically didn't call training your replacements. They called, you would have to do knowledge transfer. So as they were bringing over 220 employees, we were told that we would do knowledge transfer to these individuals coming over right. here. As we found out, and as the company, our company at that time found out, the people coming over here from Southeast Asia did not have the job skills to actually take our positions. Wow. So they sweetened the pot to us individuals who were still there that if we stayed on an additional 10 weeks, we would get it an additional 10 weeks of severance pay. Let me just ask, uh, because I want to sh cut to the chase with you now running for Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, you're running as a Republican? Yes, I am. Okay, and when is the election? The election would be in November 2018. Okay. Craig, we would love to bring you back and talk to you about this more. This I is a subject that, that. Uh, it infuriates our viewers, mm -hmm. it infuriates Americans, because, again, there might have been a, a program that had initially the right intentions, but we all know now it's been abused, and people like you have been a victim. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, thank you very much.